record. Okay. Ah, it started. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. okay good morning, okay. everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, class this morning. Um, we'll begin with um, uh, Second Timothy chapter three. We'll continue from where we had stopped uh, last Monday. Uh, we'll continue on. Before that, uh, can I request uh, one of you to please lead us in prayer? Can I ask Sri Kumar to lead us in prayer, please? Yes, Pastor. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, Father God, for this wonderful day which you have given to us. Father, we surrender everything before your throne and we pray that prepare our heart to receive the word of insight and the word of wisdom of Father. We ask you, Holy Spirit, strengthen your servant that, Father God, every word which is going to come out from our mouth, let it carry the life and power of Father God, which will edify our faith, which will edify our Lord Master vision which will edify the purpose of our call of Father God. We humble ourselves before your throne room and we pray that Father speak to us so that we can able to follow you and we can able to finish this race and to win the prize what you have kept for us, O oh God. All the glory, honor and praises belongs to you. In Jesus' most holy and matchless name we pray. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sri Kumar. Um, Last Monday, we uh, looked at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, um, and we looked at what uh, Paul was, you know, talking about uh, the kind of people who will be there in the last days. And uh, he talks about uh, their nature, what kind of people they will be. And then uh, he goes on to say in verse um, 10, you know, uh, tells Paul, but you be care, you know, but you have carefully followed my doctrine. So he's saying that compared to these kind of people who will threaten the earth uh, in the last days uh, and who Timothy must, you know, struggle with or cope with in his own day, you know, Paul is saying that, you know, there is a stark difference between them and uh, Timothy, uh, because Timothy has uh, basically, you know, been taught from the scripture, he's learned the doctrine, he's, uh, you know, followed uh, 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 Paul's life very closely, he has uh, observed his life, his uh, ministry, his way of doing things, he's learned so much from him the last 18 years, and so he says, you know, um, uh, but you, Timothy, and he's just drawing a very clear distinction or dividing line between Timothy and those who ruled by the, by the demonic spirits in the last days. And he says, you know, you have learned so much more. So what you need to do is you need to impart, you need to uh, teach, you need to, uh, you know, uh, impart this into the life of uh, the believers, the saints in the church. And then he goes on in verses 12 and 13, where he's, uh, uh, Paul is reiterating the fact what will happen during the last days. So can one of you please read verse 12 and verse 13, please? Of 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verse 12 and verse 13. Can one of you please read? Yes, Sasha. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Amen. Thank you, Asha. So here, you know, uh, uh, Paul is reminding Timothy that, you know, his responsibilities uh, what he needs to do, even as he is there in uh, the city of Ephesus, what he, his uh, responsibilities are. And he's telling him that no, no one is exempt from uh, persecution. Those who desire to live a godly life, those who are in ministry, those who are serving God, and those who desire to, you know, uh, live a life that is holy and pleasing in God's sight, they will surely suffer um, persecution. And then he goes on to talk about uh, these uh, in the last days, uh, the kind of men again. He talks about these evil men. He calls them imposters. The the word actually imposters is wizards. 
uh, these men who cast spells, who are uh, involved in the occult, means uh, supernatural, magical powers and practices, but not with the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, through, uh, you know, uh, the power of uh, demonic spirits, Satan, and, uh, you know, the strongholds uh, through which they are able to, you know, do things that are supernatural, uh, you know, uh, just uh, exhibit or display their magical powers, and um, but this is not from the right source. This is from the wrong source. And uh, Paul says that you know, even as they uh, do all of these um, uh, uh, magic and the supernatural through uh, the wrong source of power that is from demons that is energized by Satan and by his uh, demonic angels, you know, he says that they will deceive many, and many will uh, be uh, deceived. And that is why. Uh, remember, we were saying that, you know, it's so in, in chapter 2, we looked at uh, in Second Timothy chapter 2, the importance of um, us pursuing, uh, you know, uh, 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 demonstrations of science, miracles and wonders, even as we are in this last days, it is so much important for us, uh, you know, to be... Uh, 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 to desire to be filled with the anointing, with the power uh, of the Holy Spirit, so that we can manifest uh, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in a greater and a powerful way, even as we preach, teach, and uh, you know, uh, go about doing science, miracles, and wonders. Because in the last days, uh, there is going to be people who are going to be energized by demons, by Satan. They are also going to do the supernatural, the magical powers, and many people are going to be deceived and it's so much more important for us as a church you know to desire to display god's glory uh, and power and so that people will not be blinded by the lies of the enemy but you know they will know the truth and the truth will set them uh, free so god is uh, counting on us he's depending on us and that's uh, uh, hence it's so important for us as a church uh, to grow stronger and stronger in the truth, in the doctrines of God's word, uh, preach and teach it uh, with uh, the power uh, that we, you know, will be manifesting the power and the presence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, also live lives that are holy and uh, pure uh, in God's sight. And even as we preach and teach with the anointing, uh, we will also desire to flow in the supernatural, in the gifts of the Spirit, so that people can en encounter God in a very personal and a very powerful uh, way. And then he goes on to reiterate um, the same thing that he has been, you know, at uh, regular intervals in his letter to Timothy, where Paul at regular intervals has been stopping and saying, but you preach and teach, but you, you know, uh, 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 stay or, uh, you know, teach what you have heard, what has been imparted to you. So he has, uh, Paul had uh, regular intervals in his letter. He keeps reiterating this. He keeps telling uh, Timothy this over and over again, reminding him that his job is not uh, to argue or to get into disputes or uh, you know into arg into discussions with these false teachers because it's going to have no uh, meaning, no purpose. It's just going to end with strife and division. But he continuously tells him, "But you, man of God, but." you, Timothy, you know, uh, what you have heard, what has been imparted to you, what you have uh, observed through my life, what you have uh, learned, you know, that you teach, teach God's, uh, the solid truth in uh, God's word. So teach and teach that to uh, people. So he continues, I mean, he comes again uh, to say the same thing in verses uh, 14 and uh, 15. So again, somebody read verses 14 and 15, please. Okay, verse 14 says, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So 
Paul is again, you know, uh, kind of reiterating, uh, encouraging uh, Timothy to continue in the truth or continue in what has been he has learned, what he has received from childhood, uh, what he has learned and received even in his 18 years of interaction with Paul when he's observed his life and ministry closely. So he's mentioning two things, you know, he's reminding him of two things, uh, or he's saying continue in the truth because you know from whom you have learned them. You know, he's learned them from Paul, he's learned the uh, Apostle Paul, he's also learned it, uh, his, uh, his spiritual foundation, spiritual nurture from his grandmother and his mother, um, and also from where you have received this truth or where you have you know, uh, being taught this truth is from the Holy Scriptures. You have learned all of this from the Holy Scriptures. The truth of the word has been deposited in you. And so Paul is telling Timothy, you preach and uh, teach that. So this is what basically Paul has been doing his entire life. You know, he has just received this truth. And this truth is what he has been preaching and teaching for which he is being uh, persecuted for which he has been, um, you know, uh, imprisoned and, uh, you know, beaten up and left for dead and all of that. But nothing has deterred him or stopped him from preaching and teaching uh, the gospel. I think uh, that passion, that zeal, that fervor, that, um, um, that you know, Paul had for the, the Torah uh, has uh, I think has doubled, has increased once the whole truth or the reality of, you know, the Old Testament that has been uh, has been written is, uh, you know, portraying or foretelling or pointing towards the coming of the Messiah. And when he has that uh, powerful encounter with, uh, you know, uh, with Jesus, the whole reality, the whole truth of the a scripture comes so alive to him that you know he is uh, so zealous to preach about it and teach about it and nothing is stopping him even in the stage you know when he is imprisoned and he knows that that is impending upon him is uh, looming large over him uh, is like uh, weighing heavily upon him even in the situation you know he's just making use of that time uh, uh, where well, this is not a house arrest, but it's a proper imprisonment to write to Timothy to encourage him and this whole passion and zeal of you know, preach the word, preach the word, teach the word, which he has been, you know, talking again and again uh, in these uh, in this entire uh, two letters that he has uh, written uh, to him. So he says, continue in the truth, teach the truth, because you know where you have you whom you have received it and from where you have uh, received it from. So there are two important lessons that we can learn from here that, you know, uh, we have to be people who are established in the scripture, uh, you know, like uh, we already looked at uh, in chapter three, verse 15, where Paul says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed of the truth, but rightly dividing uh, the word of truth. So he's in verse 15, he tells him to be focused. Uh, this is something that's an ongoing, continuous work and, you know, uh, uh, do it earnestly. And then he says, you know, be diligent uh, in the way you present yourself uh, so that you can be approved of God. Be diligent in the uh, way you be a worker who does not to need to be ashamed uh, before God that because you fulfill your calling and rightly divide the word of uh, uh, truth, which means in the right way, you know, uh, understand the word, use the uh, right uh, uh, tools of interpretation, you know, uh, work hard to master the right interpretation, the ways of interpreting so that you can preach and uh, teach. So this is something that Paul writes to Timothy, but it's so relevant even in our time that we need to be established in the truth. Um, you know, we need to be people who are diligent uh, uh, in what God has entrusted to us, uh, diligent in the way we present ourselves to God, approved in a manner, the way we are living our lives. 
uh, you know, that, uh, the way we fulfill our calling uh, that and what God has purposed us to do, we will do it uh, with diligence uh, or with commitment, with passion in an honorable, holy way so that we don't need to be ashamed before God and also rightly dividing uh, the word of uh, truth. So even as you're learning so much of scripture, you know, interpreting so many uh, 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 scripture passages and, uh, you know, uh, books in the Bible, such an in-depth study that you're doing. I hope, you know, all of you are taking the time to uh, go through your notes, to learn, to read, because once you are in the ministry, you know, you really don't have the time for that. So uh, even as you're studying now, it will be good, you know, uh, after every class, you know, uh, at the end of the day, just go through the notes, uh, uh, you know, understand it, um, you know, um, just kind of comprehend everything so that when you preach and teach, you are somebody who's rightly dividing uh, the word of truth because you've understood it. Um, and, you know, you're not just wasting your time doing other things, but even as this is so important for, uh, uh, even as you're learning God's word in depth, you will never get the time later on good to spend, um, you know, time just feeding on God's word, looking through your notes, going through the lecture videos, uh, you know, so that you are well established in the Holy Scripture and you can preach and teach it because there's not going to be much time, you know, for us to be doing this. Uh, time is very short. Time is very limited. Uh, there are going to be a lot of restrictions, so we need to make use of the time to preach and teach um, you know, and before that, um, uh, understand it and learn from it for yourself. Make it so much part of your life so that you're able to, you know, preach it and teach it to uh, people. And then the other important lesson is that, you know, we have to be men and women of credibility only when our message is credible. Um, our message is only credible when we, uh, uh, you know, are living lives that are, uh, you know, trustworthy, honest, holy uh, in God's sight, and you know, and in in the in the way that we behave before people, you know, uh, when uh, the way we act, the way we behave, our attitudes, when it is uh, holy, honoring, pleasing to God, you know, then people can trust us. Then our message can be uh, credible. So our message is credible because we are credible. Uh, which means people will begin to trust us, receive our word, because they are looking at our lives very closely, watching us. Uh, so, you know, like we said, uh, uh, desire to be that vessels of honor, you know, and uh, the four things that you need to do, you know, purify yourself, cleanse yourself, sanctify yourself, make yourself available uh, for God's use. And when you do that, you know, whatever you preach and teach uh, will be uh, credible. So this is what Paul is uh, telling Timothy. You know, there are two things that makes you stand above the rest uh, of those who are uh, trying to be leaders in the church, who are trying to bring in wrong teachings, false teachings. And these people in the last days, you stand above them because uh, you know, you know the truth. Where have you received it? You've received it from the Holy Scriptures, and from whom you have learned it. You've learned it from me, uh, and also from your uh, grandmother and your uh, mother. And then he goes on to talk about uh, a scripture, which is a very uh, relevant, very famous verse, which all of us know, um, in verses 16 and 17. So, can one of you please read verses 16 and 17, please? and 17 it reads and all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work amen thank you say so here he says that all scripture is given by the inspiration of god which means all scripture is the he's talking about the old testament scriptures then uh, but we also have the new testament scriptures now uh, scripture now and everything that has been written in the word of god is by is authored by the holy spirit inspired by the holy spirit it's god breathed which means that you know even though these uh, holy men 
you know, the authors who wrote it, even as uh, they were from different cultural settings, uh, they used their own human language, they had their own limitations in their own time and day, uh, yet we see that, you know, from Genesis to Revelation, uh, there is a common thread, there is a main truth running throughout. Uh, we see that the prophecies that has been given thousands of years back, uh, every ritual, every sacrifice, uh, every prophecy concerning the coming of the Son of Man, uh, the second person in the Trinity uh, is completely completely fulfilled in the person and the work of um, uh, Jesus Christ. So, you know, they say that there are at least 332 distinct Old Testament uh, predictions regarding the Messiah, uh, which is perfectly fulfilled uh, in uh, the birth uh, and, uh, you know, in Jesus' life and his um, ministry. And also we see that there are four 40 different authors who wrote through, diff, you know, uh, years of a span of years of time. Some of them never even met each other. But, you know, all of these uh, prophecies fulfill whatever God spoke in the Old Testament, even the sacrifices, uh, the, 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 the rituals, the ceremonies, like the Passover, everything is everything, you know, is seen fulfilled in the person and the work of uh, uh, Jesus Christ. And you learn some of them, you know, Jesus being the sacrificial lamb, Jesus, uh, the morning and evening sacrifices, how it was fulfilled uh, in Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus Christ being the Paschal lamb, the Passover lamb, uh, which you learned uh, in uh, Christology. Uh, so even all of these sacrifices, everything had such, a, it was a type and a shadow uh, or it was for, for pointing to uh, the person and work of uh, Jesus Christ. So, you know, everything was just so inspired by um, uh, by the Holy Spirit. I'm sure some of them, what they have even written, the prophecies, they wouldn't even, the authors wouldn't have even, uh, you know, uh, been able to comprehend themselves but they just wrote it because they were so inspired by the holy spirit they were moved by the holy spirit like we read in uh, second peter chapter 1 verse 20 and 21 where it says knowing this that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation for prophecy never came by the will of man but holy men of god spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit so nothing that was written was written because of the will of man or their own understanding their own comprehension but it was just as they were moved by the uh, holy uh, spirit okay so that is um, you know how scripture is inspired it is the word of god it's truth it's god speaking uh, to man yes say Thank you, Pastor. Um, on this verse, I did get a question uh, sometime last year. Uh, I just wanted to know if this was the correct way of answering. So there was this guy who asked the question that when Paul wrote this ver wrote this letter, uh, mainly on this verse that we're looking at, to Timothy, um, that what was he referring to all scripture? Um, was it just the Old Testament? In other words, the Torah? the prophets and uh, Psalms and Proverbs. And basically what he was getting at was that the epistles and the gospels was not, was not included in what he was saying. So I did answer this way. I said, um, yes, Paul was right. He, uh, yes, you're right. Paul was referring to the, the Old Testament, the Torah, the prophets, as the all scripture being inspired by God. That said, all the people who wrote the Gospels and Paul who wrote the Epistles and Peter, James, um, they also spoke the Word of God. So all we see in Scripture is also inspired. So all Scripture from Genesis to Revelation qualifies under this verse. But what Paul was referring to was mainly the Old Testament at that time when he was writing that time. So I don't know if this was a correct way to answer Yes, it is uh, say uh, it's the correct way of uh, saying it because uh, you know uh, they had the Old Testament scripture, uh, uh, which is accessible for a few of them, uh, like the uh, rabbis and those who were teachers of the law. Um, but yes, there are some uh, uh, commentary writers who says that say that Paul could also have referred 
uh, to some of the epistles that he's written because they say Thessalonians, Galatians, everything he says, you know, read it out to the churches. Um, and also they say that, you know, first uh, Peter also quotes back to uh, Paul's epistles and says that it is, uh, you know, uh, inspired by God. It, it's part of scripture. So they say that uh, Paul could be even referring to that. But uh, if you look at what he says here, you know, in, in in his time, they didn't have all of that in hand. They just, you know, they had the Torah in hand. So he could be referring to that. But it's after that, you know, they came and they, uh, they put all these canonical books and uh, brought the entire scripture and son. But at that time, they had uh, the Old Testament. So we could say for sure, yes, it is the, he was referring to the Old Testament scriptures. But even commentators say he could be referring to some of the letters that he has written uh, because Paul knew it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. But we are not sure about that here. Yeah. But now we know that the entire scripture, because we have the word of God, which includes the Old and New Testament, in our days, it applies to the entirety of scripture. Yes. Thank, thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So he says, uh, you know, he writes and says, you know, all scriptures given by inspiration and is profitable. That means is useful for doctrine uh, doctrine means you know teaching the truths uh, in in the word of god in the scripture uh, it's profitable for reproof which means uh, you know uh, the word of god uh, uh, has you know produces proof uh, gives enough evidence and conviction for things that are said uh, what it is uh, what it means what it stands for uh, the prophecies and everything you know, uh, reproof, it's also profitable for correction, which means uh, scripture, you know, uh, uh, corrects people, uh, can correct them in the way of life. There's, uh, uh, you know, it uh, the Old Testament laws uh, reveal to people that they have missed the mark, they have uh, gone against God, they have sinned. Uh, you know, it also can rectify them, reform them, transform them. Uh, it, it instructs us, which means it educates us, trains us, uh, corrects us, chastises us, uh, nurtures us in the things of the faith, things of life, the way that we need to live our lives. Uh, it's also something that, uh, you know, um, will com it completes us, it says it's for reproof, for correction, uh, for instruction, it uh, also completes us, which makes us perfect uh, and uh, equips us, means makes us ready, well prepared uh, for life, for ministry, uh, because everything we need for life and godliness is given uh, in the word of uh, God. So it, uh, the word of God is something that, you know, equips us in every area, prepares us uh, for everything that we have to do in life and ministry and the way we serve God as um, well. So even as uh, the word of God is useful for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for, uh, you know, for equipping us, for completing us and for instructing us, you know, we need to give ourselves to uh, studying the word of God, uh, studying it in depth and also uh, living by the holy uh, scripture. Okay, so Paul ends this um, chapter very beautifully by talking about, you know, uh, the power of the word of God, the power of scripture and what it can uh, do for us. So it says here the man of God may be complete, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, uh, complete in the sense uh, the word of God, you know, uh, nourishes us, strengthens us, builds us up uh, in the faith um, uh, and also equips us. Uh, to do every good work. That means, you know, equips us for uh, life and for ministry. So in one sense, I think Paul is basically telling um, uh, Timothy, you know, uh, your mentor will not be there any longer. You will have no people around you who you can look for and see them as mentors. You know, you will be on your own, but uh, don't think that you are all alone because you know, even as you feel lonely there and you want to go back and come back and be with me, but know that, you know, you have um, the father and the son. He tells him, you know, uh, in the verses that we have seen, uh, you know, they are there with you. And, uh, you know, you have the scripture, which is, uh, 
good enough or perfect enough or you know it's the best that can complete you uh, in whatever areas you are struggling because Paul knew that Timothy is going through various challenges uh, so he says you know you just depend on reading and studying God's word because that is going to make you complete and that is going to equip you for every good work so I think such a beautiful statement here by Paul you know just um, turning uh, you know Timothy's attention from him uh, because Timothy wanted to go back, be with him, you know, being alongside Paul all these 18 years. He just wants to continue living his life along with him. But Paul is giving him uh, such beautiful uh, uh, encouragement, you know, who he can depend on. That is uh, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit who is always with him and the scripture you know, that is going to make him complete even as he sees areas where he feels, you know, he's co not competent enough. Uh, but the scriptures will make him competent and will make him complete and will equip him for the work, for the task, for the race that is set uh, before him. Uh, and he will be equipped to do every good work. So as uh, we are, all of us in ministry, one way or the other, you know, uh, whether we are called full time or not, all of us are kingdom builders. All of us are, uh, you know, uh, in the kingdom of God. We have this, uh, you know, uh, the, our main calling is to build God's kingdom. We are called the royal priesthood of holy nation and we are uh, to uh, represent our maker and our creator. We are to manifest his glory here on earth, preach and teach his word. You know, uh, you can be looking around for mentors. You can find people who are not, you know, uh, men and women who you think are in the ministry, but not, you know, you don't feel that uh, good enough to look up to. You need somebody for help. Uh, don't look around for people, but, you know, uh, you God has already given you he has given you himself, uh, the, 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 God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your teacher, guide, encourager. He will remind you the truths. Uh, and we have the word of God, which is going to make us complete and will equip us for every good work. Okay, so don't look for people. Uh, don't depend on people. Uh, you know, don't lose your faith when you look, uh, when you see people fall, when you see people do things that are not right and honoring in God's word. Uh, you build your foundation on, uh, uh, you know, God, his nature, who he is and the word of God. And that will enable you to stand and weather any storm and any difficulties that you go through in life and in ministry. And you will never be a quitter, but you will always press on. Uh, taking hold of what Christ Jesus has taken hold of you uh, so that you can complete your race and, um, you know, win the crown that is there. Even as Paul has done that his entire life, he's giving him the secrets of his life and ministry. And I'm sure this is what has been Paul's uh, secret in uh, ministry. And this is something that we can learn and also hold on to and just depend on because uh, God never changes and his word will never fail. Uh, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. Amen. Okay, so that is chapter three for us. Anyone has any questions? Yes, Christopher. Oh, yes, Pastor. I just wanted to uh, refer to uh, this verse. Uh, 2 Peter 120 or uh, 120 uh, mentioned in your notes where they say that uh, knowing this first that no prophecy of scriptures of in the private interpretation so just want to understand how this sort of aligns with uh, you know the different versions of the Bible and uh, you know how they how they inter interpreted and uh, you know how uh, how they sort of conform to maybe the your you know the original version of the of the Bible, and um, how it kind of you know um, sort of um, uh, kind of aligns to also you know some of the modern day uh, uh, ways of you know yeah, 
interpreting inter interpreting uh, things. So just wanted to get some clarity on that. Uh, thank you, Christopher. So I think you've already had a course uh, on interpreting scripture, scripture, right? Pastor taught you all that. Is that right? No, no, we got that. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to understand is that there, there has been a private in, interpretation. So how does this kind of, you know, go back to, you know, this this verse from from, from Peter, uh, where, uh, you know, they say that it's not, uh, you know, private interpretation should not, should not actually happen. Okay. Uh, yeah. So here, basically, what he's saying is, you know, uh, the, he's talking about the prophecy of scripture. Uh, you know, uh, he says there's no prophecy scriptures of any private interpretation. So they're saying that what he's meaning, like, you know, the prophecies that were uh, revealed about, uh, you know, the person and work of uh, Jesus Christ, you know, has already been revealed. And all of you, you know, are witnesses of it because you have seen it. Uh, you have, uh, uh, you know, witnessed it with your own eyes that Jesus came and the way he lived and the way he died, everything has been, you know, uh, has already been foretold and has been uh, fulfilled in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. So what we are basically talking about this man, uh, Jesus, whom they are saying is not the Messiah, they are looking for the Messiah, uh, and they the Jews are not believing. They're saying all of what we are writing and saying is not by our own private interpretation. That means we are not just making it up. You know, uh, uh, it is look, go back to the Old Testament scripture, and whatever you read has been you have seen it has been uh, fulfilled. Uh, 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 in in the person and work of Jesus, and that is what even um, uh, you know uh, uh, Peter, when he is giving his first sermon in Acts chapter two on the day of Pentecost, he says, you know, you have been uh, uh, witnesses of everything that you have uh, seen about this man, but yet you have you know uh, 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 murdered him. So even in spite, and now he's saying that you know you are also witnesses of what you are seeing, what was. Uh, foretold by uh, the prophet Joel that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Now you are, the 3,000 and more who are gathered there, you are witnesses of what you have uh, seen because what you have seen has already been uh, uh, foretold. So it is here not talking about you know, saying that we are not just interpreting it in our own words, but was already prophesied, is already been fulfilled, you know, uh, is what we are actually reiterating or speaking um, about. And also about uh, interpretation of scripture, how we have all of these, you know, different versions is, uh, yes, they had some tools which they used uh, for interpreting uh, scripture and they follow those guidelines, those tools, uh, basically, uh, you know, um, um, uh, uh, interpreting it from the uh, from Hebrew and uh, from uh, the Greek, uh, but since uh, the English language is very limited in its in its in its uh, way of uh, you know uh, interpreting the rich Greek language. For example, you know just the word love has so many different connotations for love uh, in in Greek. It can be it can mean so many different things, but in the English language, it's just love. So you know they have they have uh, 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 of course you know observed all the tools for interpretation, but because of the um, the 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 weakness I can say in not in the sense of real weakness, but because of the English language, you know there is uh, the whole rich meaning of the uh, of the Old Testament or the 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 New Testament which is written in Greek and Hebrew uh, we don't receive it in the entirety unless we go into you know the exegetical studies and uh, go through the lexicons and you know uh, study it in depth and then the whole interpretation of that verse comes alive so uh, beautifully uh, so that is uh, another part but what we have is kind of near to what was being interpreted because they, uh, you know, observe the tools. But here he's basically talking about the prophecy of scripture is not that they are interpreting in their own words, but what uh, was spoken of and what is seen by 
uh, many witnesses other than just the apostles that what is what is what Peter is writing about. Does that help, Christopher? Okay. Any anyone else has any questions? No, if not, uh, we'll move on to chapter 4. Uh, so can one of you uh, please read chapter 4 for us, uh, and all of us can turn in our Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Shall I read now? 2 Timothy. Yes. 2 Timothy chapter 4 says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom? Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. The whole chapter, ma'am? Yes, whole chapter, please. Okay. Be diligent to come to me quickly, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world and has departed for Thessalonica, Crescens for Galatia, Titus for Dal Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. And Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas where, when you come, and the books, especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did much harm, did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. You also must beware of him, and for he has greatly resisted our words. At my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me, that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for this, for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Prisca and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus stayed in Corinth, but Trophimus I have left in Miletus sick. Do not do your utmost to come before winter. Eubulus greets you as well as Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with you, with your spirit. Grace be to you, be with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Stavani. Uh, so we'll start studying or begin looking at chapter four. Uh, verses uh, 1 and 2, where again Paul is coming back to or reiterating something that he has been all along telling uh, Timothy is to preach um, uh, the word. So here verses 1 and 2 are very important because Paul is basically giving Timothy a charge. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the, the charge here in the Greek word is a very strong word. Uh, it when it's translated, you know, it means testified, uh, you know. Um, so the idea that Paul is uh, uh, gave it was a solemn testimony to uh, 
to Timothy, uh, a testimony that Timothy must heed if he would be a godly uh, pastor. So here charge is more like a strong word that he is uh, telling him. He's giving him a final admonition uh, here in these verses. And he's telling my charge to you. And this is very, very important because uh, you know, he's giving him a charge before, uh, you know, God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's not just a, a polite way of telling him to do something, uh, but it's a charge, it's a solemn testimony that he is giving him. And it is serious uh, because Paul is saying, uh, you know, this is a serious testimony, this is a serious charge, this is something serious I'm asking to, to do because I believe that, you know, even as he's writing this to Timothy, or even as he is saying this to Timothy, uh, Paul knows that, you know, um, God and uh, uh, God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ is watching him, even as he is giving uh, Timothy um, uh, this charge. So he says that, you know, um, he says what, uh, what he wants him to do or what he's charging him to do is in verse 2, he says, preach the word. So it comes back to uh, the same thing. He says, you know, uh, preach the word. Uh, and even as he's saying that, you know, he's saying this is what a minister of God should do or those who are called uh, into ministry, those who God has purpose for a specific, uh, you know, ministry office, our responsibility is to preach the word. So now this is something that even uh, we need to hold on to even as you know, we look at First Timothy and Second Timothy, and as Paul reiterates this over and over again, it's so important for us also to preach the word and preach the word like never before, because time is very short. Uh, you know, uh, we would lose opportunities, we will lose the time. So whatever time opportunity you get, you know, preach the word, teach the word uh, to people, use every occasion to preach and teach the word. And then he says, you know, preach the word or um, in uh, season and out of uh, season, which means, you know, whenever it's, uh, uh, you know, don't preach the word only when you feel like or when it's convenient for you, uh, when you feel it's easy, but preach the word even when it's not, the time is not convenient, the situation is not convenient or it's not easy for you, it's uh, it's difficult, it's painful, you know, whatever uh, season of life you are in, you know, preach uh, the word. Um, you know, uh, it was it is told that there was once uh, a Church of England clergyman uh, who was, you know, saved very miraculously and gloriously. So he was saved. And when Jesus changed his life, you know, he started uh, preaching the gospel to his whole parish in England. And all of them got saved. And then he started preaching in the neighboring parishes or the neighboring churches. And, uh, you know, the clergymen of those churches or those parishes, they got very, very offended. Uh, so they all went to the bishop and reported about him and they asked the bishop uh, to make this man stop, you know, preaching and teaching uh, the word. Um, so, you know, the bishop uh, called this uh, young uh, clergyman from England who was gloriously saved and he confronted him and said, you know, I hear that you are always uh, preaching and you don't seem to be doing anything else other than preaching the word of God. So, you know, this, uh, this changed uh, 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 clergyman answered, he said, well, Bishop, you know, I only preach during two seasons of the year. So the Bishop said, oh, I'm glad to know that uh, because, you know, his kind of his, uh, his whole questioning him or trying to make him stop is going to make it more easier for him, the Bishop thought. So he said, oh, I'm glad to know that. What seasons are they? So this man replied, in season and out of season, you know. So uh, basically, we need to be prepared uh, to preach and teach the word, even when we don't feel the time is convenient, even though we feel the time is not right. Uh, we don't uh, feel good enough, whatever, you know, just be available uh, to teach God's word, to preach uh, God's word. And uh, Paul goes on to say, even as you preach the word, you know, oh, sorry, we'll stop here. It's um, 10.51. We'll uh, go for our break and then uh, continue. 
um, we continue from uh, from verse two onwards. I'll uh, I'll see you at uh, in 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 twelve minutes. Okay, I'll give you extra two minutes time. Okay, thank you everyone. Have a good break. Got carried away.